and welcome to this overview training video for the ABX 10K Flightline Test Set from Viavi Solutions. We will be reviewing the features and use of the ABX 10K across two series of videos. Our first series of five videos will concentrate on using the ABX 10K and reviewing its features. In this Series 1 Part 1 video, we will be taking a 360 degree product tour of the ABX 10K. Other Series 1 videos will concentrate on the user interface, system settings menu, and the tray menu. The last video in the first series will go over asset management as well as firmware and software updates using the Stratasync system and a USB memory device. Series 2 will go into deeper detail on using your AVX 10K with videos focused on the variety of ordering configurations available to users, followed by videos showing the setup, operation, and testing of individual communication, navigation, and surveillance systems. The AVX 10K is a rugged, weather resistant test set meeting MIL 28800 Class 2 environmentals and is suitable for use in harsh flight line test environments. It utilizes the Viavi One Expert based platform, which has expansion capabilities that can support the development of future test solutions, keeping up with advancements in the avionics industry. The AVX 10K is capable of testing the performance of communications, navigation, and surveillance systems consisting of transponder, ADSB, and TCAS systems. The AVX 10K also has many standardized auto tests that can be used either on the bench or flight line. So let's begin with the product tour. The AVX 10K has a touchscreen display similar to your smartphone. However, if you're working outdoors with gloves on, you can use the cursor and control buttons to navigate settings and on-screen dialogues. Tests and settings are hosted in a series of ribbons. Either touch an item on the screen or use the OK button to open the ribbon. Tests are organized by the system tested up to and including the system settings ribbon that gives access to items such as network, display settings, and updates. Test configurations are software unlockable should you decide in the future that it's necessary to add functionality. Function hard keys and other buttons below the screen provide a backup method of controlling the AVX 10K when conditions prevent the use of the touchscreen. In the top row below the screen are four function hard keys. When not using the touchscreen, these keys will select screen-specific options shown above each key. Below the function keys are up, down, and right, left cursor navigation keys that allow you to navigate through the display options in the same manner as using the touchscreen. The OK button in the center of the cursor keys is your enter or confirm button. Below the cursor buttons in the lower left is the back button. This is used to exit a menu or to go back to the previous menu or screen. If a field is selected for editing, selecting the back button exits a field, canceling an unconfirmed change. In the center you will see the home button. Pressing this will take you back to the main menu. The utility tray button in the lower right corner opens the on-screen utility tray. Last, but not least, the power button turns the AVX 10K on and off by pressing and holding the button for approximately 3 seconds. The AVX 10K uses many of the standard icons we've become used to for alerting us to the status of the test set. Along the top of all screens are the battery status and charging indicators. In the middle is the icon to access the utility tray. Swipe down or use the tray button hard key in the lower right to access the utility tray. The view we currently see on screen is the utility tray. This tray provides quick access to commonly used functions such as screen capture, turning off or on network connections, or accessing the help system. Ethernet and wireless network icons turn on and off to show which network connection is in use. And finally, one can see the time in the top right corner. At the top of the unit are four status LED indicators, transmit, receive, error, and battery. If you are interrogating a transponder or TCAS or transmitting an ADSB squitter, you will see the TX LED flash. If the UUT is responding to your interrogations or transmitting data, the RX LED will flash. A solid red error LED indicates error and alarm conditions. The type of error varies depending on the application, and all errors are displayed in the utility tray. A multicolor LED indicates the battery status. A solid green battery LED indicates that either the battery charge is higher than 30% or that an external source is powering the unit. Solid amber indicates that the battery charge is getting low and that the charge is between 10 and 30%. Solid red indicates that the battery charge is critically low, less than 10%, and an audible beep will occur 30 seconds before the unit shuts itself down. A flashing red battery indicator indicates that the device is being powered by an external AC power and the battery is not installed in the device. Okay, that's an overview of the front panel. Let's have a look at the side panel. On the right hand side you will see a protective door. Underneath this door you will find two USB ports and two RJ45 Ethernet ports. 
These ports allow you to export reports to USB-connected devices, remotely control the AVX, and update your unit's firmware and software. You may never have a need for two ports, but these come standard on the base unit and allow for future expansion. The AVX-10K can also be used as a Wi-Fi access point to control via your Apple or Android mobile device when you don't have access to Wi-Fi. Clips on both sides of the test set provide you with a choice of where to attach the hand strap for maximum comfort and usability. Let's review the back panel and connections. Turning the unit around, you will notice a built-in kickstand, which is ideal for the bench or setting the unit on a cart during testing. Looking at the back, at the top of the two horns, you'll see two square slots. This is where you will attach the 1030-1090 MHz RF antenna for radiated or over-the-air transponder and TCAS testing. On the top and towards the front of the unit, you will notice a top hat. This is a built-in GPS receiver to sync the GPS timing and capture your geographic location for ADSB reported position accuracy testing. Next, we'll look at the three TNC type connectors. Starting from the left is the SWR connection. This connector is a 10 to 1215 MHz port for SWR and DTF distance default measurements. The RFIO connector is for connecting to the UUT under test with a cable at the LRU or feeder line, or for connection to an antenna coupler such as the UC584. Finally, used to support transponder or TCAS testing, is a 1 watt antenna port for radiated over the air testing of transponder and TCAS systems using the 1030-1090 MHz RF antenna. This port is also used with the WIP antennas during NAVCOM system testing. This port may also be used for some applications using an antenna coupler if so identified in the coupler user's manual or procedure.